Okay, so we are doing a value scale. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> all right, so on the value scale right here, I have an example on the side of each of the value scales. So this first one right here, you're going to start from dark and go to light. I recommend starting with the dark because I feel that the darker is easier to control really. If you start with the light, sometimes you get too dark too quick and then it's harder to go backwards. So we're gonna start with the darkest value possible. And we're gonna shade in the whole space. And the only thing that we're changing around is the pressure. Okay, so I'm just using a regular, what is this one? A, a HB number two pencil, which is right in the middle value of all the art pencils. <laughs> okay, so I'm shading in the whole space. The only thing that I'm using right now to make a difference is pressure. I'm using a lot of pressure with the pencil. So the next value, I'm just gonna change up the pressure. I still want it to be a value that is next to what I just drew. So I'm still using some kind of pressure. Good morning. Okay, so I'm still using some kind of pressure and I want that value to be somewhat close to what I just drew. Okay, and again, I'm filling in the whole space. Okay, next, now I want my middle value, and I'm just, again, changing up the pressure. Oh, see, something was underneath. Okay, changing the pressure to something a little bit lighter. Okay, your goal is to really make this go from dark to light. You don't want the values to be um, random, which I have seen before when people do their value scales. Okay, I'm gonna erase it just a little bit and then I'll smooth it out because I feel the value is a little too dark for what it was next to. Okay, and I'll smooth that out with a drawing stump in a minute. Okay, so then the next value, again, I'm just changing up the pressure using a much lighter hold. And then the last one, when I do the value, if I'm gonna draw anything at all, I'm actually drawing a similar line to that, but a very light value. So now I'm gonna use the drawing stump, which is also known as a blending stump or a blending tool. Um, what are my other names? Blending stump, blending tool, drawing stump. All right, so anyway. So this one, the drawing stumps are filled with paper. That is all that it is filled with. Uh, there's no lead in, the in this, it is not a pencil. Even though many people question, then why does it leave marks? The reason is because somebody used it already. So if you're worried about getting a dark value on your light value, then just use another paper and rub some of that off. Okay, so I use the drawing stump to help me smooth out the value and blend it together like that okay and when I do that I typically use a circular motion okay you don't necessarily need to use it on this part of your value scale I don't care if it's smooth or not but if you would like the practice with using the drawing stump then by all means okay and there is my first value value scale rather all right so to continue so we already just did the value scale, the first one. Excuse me, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on the gradual value scale. So the gradual one. Okay. The gradual one has, is a smooth transition, completely a smooth transi transition. There is no stop from yeah, there's no stopping in between. A lot of the times what I'll see people do is they'll either shade, they'll start making their values, and then they'll go to the next value, 
and then they'll go to the next value. And you see these stops in between. The other thing that I tend to see is in the value scale that I gave you, people literally draw in the spaces that should be there. It's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be from dark to light without any stops in between. And what I will see with this, the reason why this does not work is because a lot of the times those lines that they drew don't even match the next value and it really makes a difference. It really makes it difficult to have that smooth transition, okay? So do not draw the lines. If I had wanted the lines to be there, I would have drawn them just like I did in there. Okay, so the next one that you're going to do, what I like to do is I like to start going up and down. Do you need something? Good, but watch what I'm doing with this. So I start going up and down, and as I move along, I start to change the pressure, but I do want to keep doing, uh, keep following along with my value scale. That's okay. He's not there uh, yet. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so I'm moving along and I'm using that first value scale as my guide because I want this to go the full length of the value scale. Okay, so now I'm starting to reach here, and this is where people are compelled to draw that line. Do not draw the line. Next thing I'm gonna start doing is just changing the pressure as I move. Okay, and you wanna do that pretty slowly. And if you notice, I kind of go back and forth with my pencil because I'm just kind of going back to make sure that I've got the right value and that it's blending together smoothly. All right, so now I'm into the next value already and you can see that. I've now changed the pressure, changed the value, and I wanna keep that value sustained. I wanna keep it going. And look, I do not care again if you go outside the lines, okay? So now I'm gonna keep changing the pressure a little bit, start getting even lighter. Okay, now I'm gonna start getting even lighter. And lighter and lighter and lighter. And now I'm even starting to spread out the line a bit. Okay, and now I'm done. I could call this done, but if you would like to get more practice with the drawing stump, which I do recommend, then what you may wanna do is you would start, honestly, either side that you start at will be fine. All right, so when I'm using the drawing stump, I'm doing this in a circular motion. So if you watch, it's as if, the reason I do the circular motion is because I'm going back and forth with it. Yes, you can go up and down, that works as well. But the reason I do the back of uh, the circular motion is to kind of go back and forth with it naturally. Okay, and same thing, I'm moving along with what I have. Trying not to stop as I do this, but if you have to, that's fine. Okay, and there you go. All right, if you wanna go back in, like I see I have some spaces, I can go back in and just really clean it up if you really want to. I will not fault you if you don't. Just letting you know. All right, again, I'm really just looking to see that you understand how to smoothly transition the dark to light, okay? All right, any questions on the gradual? Okay, can I move on to the next one? Yes. I put it here for you. You're welcome. You okay? Feeling yeah. sick? Yeah. Getting better? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so the next three, I actually recommend using a pen for. Okay? I don't know how to write recommend. Um, so when you do this, okay, again, you have the example right here for lines. 
The more lines that you have, the closer they are together, the darker it will seem. Okay, because if I drew every single line touching each other, I would actually just have a black space. So, things I also don't care about is having these lines be perfect. Do not care. Reason I don't care is because lines and cross hatching are meant to be, uh, in a way, messy. They're not meant to be perfect. All right, so I drew as many lines as I possibly could. You can even draw more if you want. All right, whatever it is, you're trying to create a dark value just by drawing lines. Okay, is it as dark as this one? No, but it is pretty dark. So now in my next space, I'm going to get lighter. And the way I'm gonna get lighter is by drawing less lines and spreading them out. And again, I do not care if they are neat. I don't want to see you sitting there with a ruler because it just unnecessarily so will take way more time. All right, so just by drawing the same kind of lines, if you can see, I was able to draw a lighter value with just lines. Okay, same thing. I just start to spread them out. Spread them out a little more. <laughs> Awkward, okay. <laughs> and less lines, I'll say, over here. All right, so again, I was able to draw the, the value just simply with lines. Okay, any questions for the lines? Beautiful. Okay, so cross hatching. Cross hatching looks something like this. Okay, so the way that you do cross hatching is you're drawing lines that cross each other. That's, you know, that's what it means. So I'm going to start by drawing diagonal lines, and it's still the same idea as the line, just the simple lines. The more lines I have, the closer they are together, the darker it will seem. However, I'm able to get a darker value with cross hatching because the lines are interweaving uh, with each other. Okay, so. All right, so I did diagonal lines going one way and then I did diagonal lines going in the other way, but I'm not done. Now I want to do them vertically up and down and then I'm going to do side to side. And again, you want to keep those lines close together. It does not matter to have neat lines. Okay, remember this is more of a sketch drawing typically and a quick way of showing shadow. Okay, and the last way I'm going to go is horizontally. I really do recommend using pen for this instead of pencil, but if you're really stuck on the pencil, then go for it. Look at how dark a value I was able to get. That's pretty close to this one, if not this one right here. Okay, so the next one, what do you think I have to do? Same thing but lighter. Right, same thing but lighter. How do I make it look lighter? Not close together. Not close together, right. So I'm gonna start to spread the lines apart. Okay, same thing, still do diagonal. Okay, vertical. And horizontal. And I got a lighter value. All right, same thing, just keep going, keep Spreading out the lines. All right, and you're going to end up drawing less and less lines. And there's my lighter value. Okay. And a lot 
not less than here. One thing I do want you to be uh, wary of is you don't wanna have like, let's say this is what your second to last one looks like. Try not to make this one uh, leaving it blank because then it's a, a huge drop off. It's not a, like you still want them to be somewhat gradual even though you are stopping in between. Okay, so now my last one. The last one is stippling. I have an example over here, be it small, and another example over here. If you remember, the stippling is dots. So, let me show you the difference. Okay, so this, this is stippling. The more dots you have, and yes, it will take some time. The more dots you have, the closer they are together, just like the lines, the darker it's going to be. So this one, definitely do this one with a pen. I will also say, to cut yourself a break, divide this line in half and I will accept a half of a value scale, okay? Um, just because it will take time, all right? So this is stippling. This is annoying. This is stippling. Annoying, right? See the difference? Get it? Annoying. I don't wanna hear this. You don't need to make this noise to make the dots. This is all you have to do. And if you look, these aren't so much dots because you're not really being careful. This is dots. So, big X on that, don't do that. The more dots you have, the closer they are together, the darker. So now as I move along and I wanna get it to be lighter, then I start to spread the dots apart from each other, draw less of the dots, okay? And you still wanna try and stretch out these values. Okay, and as I keep moving along, okay, again, I still start to spread them out. All right, and do please fill in that whole space. I'm just, again, trying to save some time. Okay, so then I still start to spread them out. Once you get to the lighter values of the stippling, your life will be a whole lot easier, but, okay? So that's stippling. Also, what I do not wanna see, but I do tend to see for some reason, I mean dots. I do not mean polka dots. I have seen this before, my friends. Somebody said, okay, so I'll draw these dots close together at first, just like she said, and then I'll start to spread them apart, just like she said, and there's my stippling, and I'll get somebody doing an actual row of these in the value scale. These are not correct. These are polka dots. Please don't do that either, okay? So this is stippling right here, okay? Again, you do not need to make the noise to make the stipples. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go over that first one one more time. Love stippling. It looks so beautiful. I hope you guys enjoy it and don't hate it. You hate may it. hate it. I already hate That's it. That's fine. That's understandable. It's kind of a, a love hate thing. Either you love it or you hate it. What can I say? All right. And I'm only doing this again because I'm videotaping. So 